Hi, I'm Rhonda Friend, and I'm your health and human science educator here in Fayette County, and this is the Extension Kitchen. And I know, cool, right? You're yeah. like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> so I had uh, invited Greg Marvel to come. We've comrades for a long time, haven't we? Yes, been long time. Worked in community mental health together for 16 years. We've ate a few meals together, cried a few tears together. And I wanted to tell you, we had Patrick Ripberger on our first episode. Good guy. <laughs> you know what he said? He said uh, that what he remembers about me when I taught at Ivy Tech was that he called me the barefoot professor. Can you even believe that? Um, yeah, I'm surprised you have <laughs> shoes on today. <laughs> so I hate shoes. It's my Appalachian culture, I'm sure. So today, uh, we've got Greg Marvel on. You can talk a little bit about... So where are you working? What do you okay. do in our community? I am manager of Children and Family Services and the Adult Service Program at Centerstone. I've been in Centerstone for um, moving toward my 25th year. Wow. So it's been a long time. I'm pastor at Central Christian Church. I also have um, opportunities that I'm uh, one of the board members for Centerstone Health, and that's where uh, Mary Rummel and um, uh, Fern McHenry practice under the supervision of Dr. Grogan. Um, so a lot of good things going on. I'm uh, part of the Fayette County Food Council, and mm -hmm. which is a part of Community Voices. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's great to be able to share today yeah. with and you. And you live in Fayette County. I live in Fayette County. We've been here for just right at 26 years. My wife's originally from here, but I'm from she's Gibson our, County. Yeah. yeah, so she's our community wellness coordinator Correct. with Correct. Purdue Extension here in Fayette County. So today we thought we would talk about mental health and kind of where that starts. And a lot of people don't know and realize that those childhood experiences, those adverse childhood experiences can actually impact mental Absolutely. health. Uh, later, so I wanted you to talk about um, the importance of kind of early mm -hmm. intervention on that so that we can uh, kind of offset some of the chronicity of mental health in later years because kids really do go through a lot. Yeah. Uh, were you bullied in school? Oh, uh, yeah. I was a little bit. Were you? Yeah. I was too. Like, I know where you people are. <laughs> like, I was bullied through school. Uh, I had like the quadrant of disasters, right? I had glasses, so I had buck teeth. And I was always the big kid, and I was smart. So there you, you can't be the teacher's pet and have all that other stuff going on. You know, everybody tells me uh, when they meet me, they say, your name is Marvel, like the comics, like Captain yeah. Marvel. And I say, yeah. yeah. And they're like, that is so cool. But it wasn't cool when you were a kid. <gasps> I bet you that's know? true. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of negative yeah. things. So, yeah. Well, so I do a program called Captain Cash, so maybe sometime we can partner. Captain Marvel and Captain and Cash. And so Captain Marvel and Captain Double Cash C's. can uh, teach some financial literacy cool. and some mental health stuff. So today, what we're going to make is something really clean and easy. So all I've done here is I've taken chicken breasts and kind of cleaned up that little tender off of there. And a serving of chicken breast is only four ounces. So this is a pound and a half of chicken. Okay. And some people would eat two, two of these. But, <laughs> but really, this is about six servings of chicken. Um, and I like to put everything in a baggie. It's just cleaner, so I know the outside of the bag is clean. And so I have got, I've already prepped it. I marinated this all night, and I'll show everybody how to make the marinade. And I thought it would be fun if you just show people how to make a real easy fruit salad. I've done this for the Head Start parents. And you just take five cups of random fruit and you use uh, sugar-free instant pudding and you just sprinkle it on top and the juice of the fruit mixes with the pudding mix and makes its own sauce and it's yep. super delicious. So 
can you talk in, kind sure. of work at the same time? Sure. So what got you into the field of mental health? Well, I think that part of it for me was the fact that I know that there is a connection um, between um, mental health and physical health and nutrition and spirituality. Okay. And so all those things interlock in everything that we are mm -hmm. as um, human beings. And so for me, um, it was the interesting concept of I like this sense of helping people okay. and um, I uh, empathize really easily with people. Um, I care about people. I'm kind of the person that if I see you on the street, I'm the person who's going to be saying hi to you. How are you doing? Yeah, Good to hi, see you. Yeah. Um, and uh, don't ask me because sometimes I don't remember names. But the fact is, you know, I feel like that um, it's this sense of everybody having um, the right and the... Um, uh, the presence of mind to accept and be involved with each other as a part of a community. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember visiting New York City with some friends of ours and, and oh, you want me to go ahead? Talking to Okay, her. okay. <laughs> so, um, and we were in New York City and we were getting on the subway and um, Jim um, said to us as we were um, getting on the subway, he goes, now, um, everybody just realized that it's not really appropriate uh, for you to um, necessarily talk to people on the subway. And I looked at him like, really? <laughs> and so he just, uh, he obviously shook his head a lot at me and the fact that, you know, I, on the New York subway, um, said hello to people. Yeah. And so that, um, that consider, I, I, you know, that kind of consideration for humankind, I realized that, you know, I, I've always, when I was in, um, uh, just out of high school and uh, working on a degree, I um, had the opportunity to work in a nursing home with um, elderly people, and they needed um, strong-backed people to help people get people in bed and out of bed and things like that. So that's kind of what I did. And I, I remember. Didn't know that. You didn't? All that no. And so part of what I really enjoyed about that and learned to really love is that I've always had older people in my life. Yeah. And so, um, you know, this whole concept in human services and in social work is the fact that all people have, um, you know, this sense of, uh, the need for human interaction. And I think, you know, that's part of the really difficult thing that's happened during COVID oh, is yeah. the fact that people have not been as well connected um, as prior. Um, one of my aunts is in a skill care facility in Evansville. And uh, she uh, hasn't been able to see her girls um, or they haven't been able to be face-to-face -face for um, since... Uh, April of last year. Yeah, it's been really and, hard. You know, um, the importance of human interaction and human touch. Yeah. You know, for uh, people who are elderly, um, just you can the fact. Skip it with this, I've got yeah. a fancy tool right so, there. So, um, just really, you know, the people that are elderly, <laughs> the whole concept of um, hitting the bowl when you're supposed to, um, being able to um, connect and have uh, a sense of belonging. Yeah. You know, some people, you know, we kind of, if you're in a relationship or you're in a family and you have like eight kids running around in your house or something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're probably touching each other all the time, trying yeah, to get through the halls yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But you know, people who are um, elderly um, or in skillful care facilities don't have that opportunity. And so um, that whole sense of touch and um, getting them to um, know that people still care, I think is really important. So, it's been super hard during yeah, COVID. Yeah, absolutely. So have you seen an increase in suicidal ideation or mental health? Yeah, uh, I th yeah we've seen um, a lot more um, uh, uh, mental health issues, a lot more depression and anxiety, statistically across the state of Indiana and um, in the United States. Um, you know, there. You know, knowing.
trauma. Um, uh, I don't really have any kind of read on how much more trauma there is. But, you know, this whole concept that you can become really deathly ill is um, kind of a fear that, you know, can be, can be um, born in our heads that can yeah. kind of get out of control. And so, yeah, just lots of different experiences with, for people to have in this time, I think. Yeah, I think it's been super hard. Uh, my mom is pretty homebound anyway, and just the fact that not as many people have been able to come see her safely uh, because of COVID for a while, and she certainly is older and it's more, I just dumped them mm -hmm. in there. It's a lot harder for her to, you know, get out even get her in a car sure. and stuff like that. So I do think those connections are important. I was gonna say one of the things that I wanted to do Extension Kitchen for was to partner with community, right? So this is not just uh, the Greg and Rhonda show. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you're slamming that banana. Uh. But, uh, but it's about all of us and what can we do as a community to help improve the mental health outcomes, to help people feel more included, um, help people have a happier, more satisfied life. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm gonna let you talk about that sure. in a minute. I wanted to show everybody, this is just how I do chicken, but I like to mix all my spices first, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got garlic powder, onion powder, I've got paprika, I've got chili powder and Italian seasoning all in here. And then, I, like I said, I clean up my chicken and put it in a bag and I just pound it out so that it's kind of more even. And even though I did that to this and marinated it all night, it still look how it puffs mm -hmm. up and gets thick. So then what I do, I take, I need a measuring cup. Where did our measuring cups go? I don't even know, so I'm just you gonna can pour eye it. it. So why don't you eye about, I'm just gonna hold it open, just dump about a half a cup of olive oil Ooh, in there. Right I'm there. eyeing it? Yeah, okay. you're gonna do it. I'll just okay. tell you when. Just do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm generous with the olive oil. All uh, right, it's okay because what, you know, it's not going to really soak in the chicken too much. But so I just like to do it like that, seriously. And I just dump that spice in there. And I don't know which uh, TV show chef talks about this. It might be Paula Dean. She says, you always got to massage your meat. So, mm -hmm. so I just like to rub this around and kind of make sure that the olive oil and the spices get all over the chicken. And you can see it's still nice and clean mm -hmm. in the bag. And... Uh, and then I just leave it in there over. You're also not getting that chicken gunk uh, on your I hands. I hate the chicken gunk. And even, no. so I use a cutting board to clean this up, but I roll the side of the bag down and then I just drop it in the bag. Okay. So, uh, and everything. But you can see how nice and beautiful that chicken's got. Now, chicken to be done needs to be 165 degrees. Okay. All right, and then it's best, so like, you like to grill, right? I like to grill. So if Becky hasn't told you, you need to let your meat come to room temperature before you cook it, because yep. that helps it. So I'm gonna walk behind you, go ahead and finish your, what you were talking about, and I'm gonna stick this in here. So I know that one of the things when we were talking about trauma, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that happen a lot of times is after people have been in um, traumatic events, mm -hmm. um, they um, go through kind of an adjustment. And so, um, so for example, um, if you were in a car I accident, the cap. did you? <laughs> Okay. We'll make sure that we wash it before we. I will. Yeah. We'll wash it. Um, and I, I, maybe we should stop right there and just talk about the importance of washing your Go stuff. Ahead. Go so, ahead. Um, my aunt Betty Coleman from Southern Indiana says tells the story of when she was in high school, and she failed a demonstration in um, home ec mm. because. She did not demonstrate washing the can before she opened it. Ooh. So it is really important and should be really important to all of us that uh, fruit 
um, all be washed um, before we cut into mm -hmm. it. We've already, we pre-rinsed and everything. The nice thing about these little clamshells that you can get, um, not this one because we'd already kind of processed that, but the clamshells themselves have slots in them to where you can use them as a strainer. Mm -hmm. You so wouldn't you want to wash them. the pineapple. Yeah, you wouldn't want to wash the pineapple because that's already. That good now, I will say that it's important in the midst of all of that, that, um, you know, you think about if you think about what a form pineapple looks, if you laid that down on your counter and just started cutting into it, the fact is, I mean, it's bit outside. It, yeah, and once you <laughs> once you start, birds, yeah, <laughs> once <everywhere>. you <laughs> slice from the skin of the fruit into the meat of the fruit, then whatever's on the outside and it has edged onto your knife as you cut through it mm -hmm. is now um, in your, um, your fruit really salad. in your fruit salad. Yeah. And so that's why, um, you know, buying, a, I love buying fresh pineapple. My wife loves fresh yeah. pineapple. Yeah. But, you know, the importance of that, I'm from Southern Indiana where um, they grow um, watermelons and cantaloupe and honeydew melons. And the importance of thinking about how a cantaloupe looks, it has like that webbing on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. The importance of washing all that. A couple of years ago, yeah. there was, a uh, an issue um, from a farm where um, the melons had cross contaminated with some stuff from and it, salmonella. Yeah, salmonella. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't that the inside of that melon was tainted. It was the fact that it was on the outside, and if and people when they cut, uh, into, cut it, into it, yeah. then it contaminated um, the melon as a whole. Yep. So being clean. Um, with your, your fruits and vegetables and stuff like that is really important. Of course, um, Rhonda and I had already um, <laughs> washed our hands in really yep. hot water and stuff yep. today before Prepped we started this process. I even washed those bananas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I, you, you know, I just think that, um, you know, it's sometimes the things that we don't necessarily think about or we kind of take mm -hmm. for granted. Just because they're in a pretty clear package doesn't necessarily mean that they're clean. Yeah, um, so. and I would agree. So even the clamshelled fruit, the blueberries, strawberries, or whatever, we do need to wash those. Uh, but the pineapple's got that beautiful juice, so you don't want to wash yeah. that off. So how are you doing? You've about got that yeah, fruit off. Yeah, almost got cut. this done. So tell us, did you have a thought? Yeah, I want to I want to talk just a minute about um, what happens in trauma because okay, um, that's I think what happens is oftentimes um, in a traumatic event. So like I had a car accident, and so you become nervous yeah. about driving a car the next time and things like that. Yeah. Those are all normal things, but what happens a lot of times in trauma is that people get to the place where they think, okay, I've got to cope with this, and so what a lot of people start doing is um, they will find comfort food. Um, so we're talking about nutrition today. And so most of us talk about comfort food. We think about bread, uh, bread ice cream, bread. ice cream, my <laughs> mother-in-law's yeah. bread. Uh, we think about um, uh, fast food, yeah. a big gulp of pop, um, things, you know, uh, things that aren't necessarily healthy for us, mm -hmm. high energy octane type drinks and things. And so um, a lot of times we um, kind of get stuck in that because in a way maybe that food kind of makes us feel good and we are using banana cream pudding in this and it is sugar free. <laughs> you just so it cuts down it on there. All, that, um, all that unneeded sugar. Do you and think it keeps the, it fresh. your grandkids could make that? Oh yeah, anybody can do that. Yep. I think it's a great family activity to do yep. for everybody. Yep. But um, what happens a lot of times is when you eat um, those kinds of foods, mm -hmm. it, it works it works on all the um, receptors in the brain. So the brain starts connecting with all that, and all those receptors are like, whoo, whoo, this stuff is really good. But then what happens is the body really does kind of, um, kind of really um, bottoms out after you know the yeah, the sugar the high sugar, yeah. the sugar high is gone um, yeah. and we we talk about that because it's really important because when the that sugar high leaves and the other thing you could do is you could use a press like this and you could 
press juice out of your fruit to add mm -hmm. to that because this may or may not set up really quickly. Um, I have almond milk we can yeah. add to it. That's the other thing. So if you're trying to get your kids to eat more dairy, you can actually add about a half a cup of any kind of milk to that. So I'll get you some okay. so it'll set up a little faster maybe. But then what really happens is um, after the serotonin and the dopamine and the endorphins kind of calm down from that sugar comfort food, then what you see is you end up with um, the chemicals that really are, are the low, like the cortisol, which is mm -hmm. more of the um, um, stress, hormone. stress hormones. And so in the midst of that, um, a lot of people, Think when they're more. dealing, yeah, just a little bit, when they're dealing with um, uh, trauma, uh, they they do the comfort stuff to feel good, but then they also get, they can get kind of stuck in that. So mm -hmm. healthy eating, um, mm -hmm. because it really is this connection in, um, the connection in nutrition, mm -hmm. healthy eating is the best thing that you, can, one of the best things you can do in the midst of that, because you don't want to be giving yourself a whole lot of um, extra caffeine, you know, like for me, comfort is like coffee <laughs> and things like that. Pe people do yeah. use caffeine yeah. to get a little, uh, their metabolism goes up a little bit. So what should, if we know in our own families, and you have grandchildren, I have nine grandchildren, uh, we have neighbors, friends, people in the church, or people that we work with or play mm -hmm. with, think that needs a little bit more? I, I think it's not too bad, but a little bit wouldn't hurt. Uh, so what are some things that we can look for? So if we know someone's had a traumatic event, or we suspect they've had a traumatic event, what are some of the signs and symptoms that we can look for that'll kind of help us know whether we just need to be that listening ear, step up mm -hmm. to help? It always amazes me that if someone dies, we'll make casseroles and stuff, but when someone gets ill with depression, you know, it's yeah. like we don't know what to do. So what would you recommend that we can do to kind of help that person yeah. find the help that they need? Well, I think that, um, you know, if you know that somebody has been through a trauma, mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't know because sometimes, guess what, people don't talk about it. That's right. And so, but if you are entrusted by a person or a friend and they talk to you about an event, you have to understand that they are entrusting you with um, some really important information. Mm -hmm. And so we had to be willing to um, take that cue mm -hmm. and listen to them mm -hmm. and help to support them mm -hmm. in um, whatever we can do to help. Mm -hmm. um, whether it is um, helping them to get to a doctor, helping them to... Um, so when do we know it's at that point? Because it kind of at the beginning, so I was a mental health first aid mm -hmm. trainer for a while. You've trained a lot in trauma-informed care. Um, so we know people can isolate, get depressed. Absolutely. Uh, maybe they don't participate in the activities that they used Anxiety, to. Anxiety, disrupted sleep. Mm -hmm. Exaggerated. Not that call. Yeah, re, uh, exaggerated startle response, you know, where they just jump when you say something and things like that. So if we're watching for those cues, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the DSM tells us that acute stress disorder happens from after the traumatic uh, event, uh, event mm -hmm. to 30 days after mm -hmm. the event. Mm -hmm. So if you're still having these night tears and nightmares and these problems still exist after mm -hmm. 30 days. Um, it's probably it's more probably like post-traumatic yeah. stress you, it's disorder. It's time for you to look because the thing is that um, probably all of us have experienced um, trauma in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so it is how we cope with that trauma mm -hmm. and how that kind resolves. Kind of predisposition. Ash, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a person who, um, you're a person who, is, has a lot of anxiety, or you're a person who um, has um, 
you're sad a lot and you have a traumatic event, you could kind of know that maybe yeah. you're more at you're risk more to develop risk. PTSD. Yeah. And so I think it's just really important not, we don't necessarily ever jump to that, but we know statistically right around 25% of uh, American population um, has, um, has, a, um, has been diagnosed yeah. with post-traumatic stress. That tells you 25%, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. You know, if you think about general population. But the truth is, probably just about all of us have, have experienced trauma in some effect or at mm -hmm. some point in time in mm -hmm. our lives. And if we have enough protective factors and resiliencies, Absolutely. usually we can move on past yeah. that outside within that 30-day window. I think it's super important that we think about Given that situation, you see people start kind of isolating. They're not participating. They're telling you no. Uh, maybe you notice they have some unexplained weight loss. It's mm -hmm. it's simple just to go to somebody and say, I'm really I'm concerned yeah. about you. Can I help? And it may you not know? be weight loss. It might be weight gain because mm -hmm. now not they're just <laughs> like eating all the time and just that nervous kind of like that nervous eating mm -hmm. um, because it, they all it all has an effect. It all has an effect. We got some plates down there. Oh, if you cool. want to grab a couple plates. You want paper? Uh, yeah, sure. Paper, less dishes to do. Um, so I think it's real important as a community, as we tr keep working on making this a place where everybody, everyone, everyone can grow and uh, work and play and be healthy in Fayette County, we have to get comfortable talking about Absolutely. those things. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's odd almost that when you know someone's depressed, we kind of just, we don't know what to mm -hmm. say. Because so. we make, we, I think it's, you know, that we just sometimes get really uncomfortable and we don't yep. know. Yep. And the fact is, sometimes it's not that you have to say anything. Yeah. It may sometimes literally, it may be literally yep. going to that friend's house mm -hmm. and sitting down with them mm -hmm. and watching TV, mm -hmm. you know, in the same room with yeah. them. Yeah. And just being aware. Yeah. So, so here's what I've done. So uh, the chicken's up to temp. We're going to let it sit and kind of rest, let the juices kind of reconstitute your, so, like, I don't know if everybody can see this, but this, this looks is yummy. fabulous. And so I will say that one thing that you could do is um, this, I, I've kind of kept stirring it, but you yep. don't have to stir it. Yeah. Um, just to be aware that you could um, do this, stir it up, and then Let's set it to the side yeah. and set it for yeah. half hour, 45 minutes, and it would do its own thing. Yeah. So that's great. And yeah. I think it looks beautiful. A serving of fruit is a half cup. Half a banana, half cup of fruit. Um, and then a serving size of chicken is four ounces. So let's look at this. Look at this beautiful chicken. I, and that's probably I, more. Yeah, so. We're just guessing. Yeah. Well, I didn't bring my scale, but so do you want to try a little bite of chicken and see how this goes? Sure. You want a big bite? Let <laughs> me poke sure. it in your face. <laughs> I trust you with a fork, really. All right. Well, that's good. It's super good. Mm -hmm. mm. Wait a minute, I got chew. Okay. So if you want to add a little vegetable to this, you would heat this pan back up and just dump the whole bag of spinach in here. Mm -hmm. A cup of spinach is only 16 calories. Put a lid on it, let it kind of sweat down. That makes a nice side. And then, I love this. This is just shredded Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. And it's Not, great on the spinach, too. It really is. Um, and then when you weren't looking, I just squeezed a little bit of lime on this to finish it off. Now we have makes a, us want to go to Florida. We have a fancy tool, but what I like to do is I just you roll it first, break up mm -hmm. the little juice, and you stick a fork in it. Now look at this. Did you know this? And you just squeeze it around the fork. Yeah. I know. That's, that's cool. fancy. Well, I think that's all we've got today. Did you try the fruit salad? No, I didn't. I've had this before. It's one of um, one of the things that my wife um, has made a lot. Is it good with a banana? Mm -hmm. You did not make a face, so that's good. No, it's great. All right, so that's what we have today for the Extension Kitchen. So until next time, 
take a step toward health one meal at a time. Okay, great. All right, see you next time. Thank you.